it's it's one of those things where you know, CTV streaming has everything. It it has so much thing, but as, there's commercials maybe potentially, mm -hmm. but yeah. you deal with it. Just like how Rob and myself were walking to the movie theater on the My Palatial Estate as we walked down. It's IMAX, of course. And as we walked down, <laughs> the, the screen you can take an Uber? black turned black as the night, and and words were just flashing upon it, and we knew Vanis had had defiled the sanctity of my personal home a theater. Um, and then the wording on it, because I, I just looked at Rob, and it 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 said. I felt it was very cryptic, but it, it said, I, I left your house this morning. It was a quarter after nine. Could have been the Welly, Willie Nelson. Could have been the wine. Uh, and and I, just, I just don't know. So I, I will leave it up to the fine folks at home, the detectives, to maybe let me know where that's from, uh, what's, what, what artist, what song. Not the nice others. thing about Stu's place, though, is because it is so secluded from everything, mm -hmm. you can look up and you can see the constellations. Reveal themselves one star at a time. So uh, this is this is one of those things. So uh, thank you all for joining us as we, on this Quarantine Heroes World podcast, mm -hmm. this is a movie that I've been super hyped on. When I saw the trailer, I sent it to the group, and <laughs> we all just sat there in amazement going, what is this? It was the Red Band trailer. Um, it was the unbearable weight of massive talent, uh, a Nicolas Cage vehicle, uh, a beloved Nicolas Cage. I think we all have a special plate in our heart for Nick, uh, named himself after Luke Cage, of course. Uh, and oh, man. He, again, he named, his, in, named his son Cal Al. One of his kids. Uh, yeah. what, 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 the other, did the other two kids get normal names? Frank. Just like... That one kid, <laughs> you, you son, are Kal El. Everyone, meet Jimmy. I Freddy. don't know what the other kids' names are. I know he just had a kid recently, so uh, yeah, I think I saw that. You, yeah. could, you could tell, you could say any of the names, and I would just be like, sure, uh, whatever. Uh, no, the 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 Mister Mix Up, the third uh, third time, Mister Mix Mister Mix Up. Uh, they actually, they, they had, he had a girl, and uh, the name is Lennon Augie. So that's that's the daughter's name. So, mm -hmm. but Cal -El is the first son. So, of course, the first son of Krypton and the first son of uh, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> so, I will say, Nick, like, Nicholas Cage's kids. That's for I mean, we can go into a, a deep rabbit hole all about Nicholas Cage, but apparently his comic book collection is mad deep. Of like, course. Of like, course. this guy, you know, is famous for having to do a lot of these B movies, be able to pay off a lot of debts that he is because he's spending a lot of money. But apparently, his, like, I'm thinking to myself, just sell your comics, bro. Like, <laughs> he did have to sell a bunch of his comics. He had to, I think, I think he, did. he had five Superman ones and he had to yeah, sell yeah. a bunch of them to get out of tax debt. Yeah, he, he might have five more, Stu, or 10 more. Uh, didn't he have like an illegal dinosaur skull or something that was supposed to be in a he did, museum? And he had to give it back. Straight yeah. out of friends, it's like this is supposed to be in the museum. <laughs> he, he bought it. He bought it, and then they they confiscated it from him. So yeah, it's it's a it's a it thing. It was a plot of National Treasure three. <laughs> they ruined it. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, I'm here, one of your hosts, Stupe. With me is one of the owners and proprietors of Heroes World, located in Marco, Ontario. That'd be Mr. John Ho. Say hello. Okay, for those who are listening, John just said hello the way Nicholas Cage does with his hands. So there we go. Fantastic. And uh, supporting, as always, uh, our resident Prince of Mischief, Mr. Rob Gaudet. Say hello. Hello, everybody at home and across the world. And for those of you who are listening, Rob just saluted. This is what we're going to do back and forth. Uh, <laughs> yeah, help. John saluted. Finger guns, and John's giving you the middle finger. Yeah. Uh, please, please don't, don't. Uh, we don't, we don't know what Rob's doing now. He, Rob, Rob is also giving you your friends. Uh, again, lots of weird things happening. Thank you for joining us as we talk about this movie. Uh, like I said before, this is something that we were all, at least I was very uh, excited about, and I wasn't sure what direction it was going into. Uh, from my crack research, which is uh, the Wikipedia page, um, yes. it, it did indicate this film uh, was budgeted at thirty million dollars. Uh, uh, it was originally released back in March 12th, 2022 at South by Southwest and uh, came out in the movie theaters in April and just dropped up on VOD as of a few days ago, which is why some of us were just able to catch up with it. 
Um, I know Nicolas Cage originally didn't want to do this movie because he thought that they were making fun of him. But once he kind of realized there's a nuance to it and we're honoring Nick Cage, he signed up on board. Uh, the Rotten Tomato score is 87% fresh. So the critics loved it. And the audience score mirrors that with an 87% as well. Uh, Nicolas Cage is the, the main star and the Mandalorian himself, uh, Pedro Pascal is the second of this lead plays javi so those are the main titular characters john you saw the trailer it was red band and then you decided to watch nothing else until you saw the movie i know you went with pat to watch it so give us kind of your general you know non spoiler <laughs> on the movie yeah no yeah, yeah so like i i remember seeing the trailer thinking okay this is going to be fun and then when it hit in theaters it kind of hit in this weird spot where i don't know if people were busy or not nothing like so i think this came out the same time as like that northman movie or something like that so it was kind of like yeah. a weird time at theaters it was definitely a week where a lot of people probably could have skipped or whatever and, and kind of just let it pass over so going into it i was like okay i uh, hopefully it'll be a gem i wasn't like super crazy um like desiring to see it but i but i was like yeah let's buy the ticket pat was like yeah let's go let's go let's go okay so we went um and this movie is fantastic folks so if for some reason you've been putting off seeing this um it's a shame that i guess it's considered a box office bomb or whatever or, or not quite living up to expectations but this is a great movie so if you haven't seen it definitely go check it out it's a ton and ton, ton of fun rob uh question to you now your your thoughts you've seen a lot of movies this summer uh this was on your radar what are your initial thoughts of this ridiculous title, uh, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. I actually forgot John went to the theater to see this. Um, and it's funny because this movie is made for John. Um, and we'll get into that after. But I, I don't I, deny it. I don't deny it. <laughs> I, I think John is right. I, I think the Northman, Northman did come yeah. out in time, but so did in and around the same time. So did um, Everything, Everywhere, I all, all that And I think you could kind of say at least these two movies – Maybe the Northman as well. They're more of like an art house movie. Um, and I think that the tsunami that was everything everywhere all at once really overshadowed this movie. Um, because it wasn't as much buzz. Like it was more buzz for like the cinephiles as opposed to the general audience who were more like, what is this everything everywhere all at once? Anyway, well, plus all movie. those people participating in that movie were all on social media. I don't think Nicolas Cage is on social media at all, right? Not much. Yeah. Um, so for me, though, I don't like this movie as much as John does. I, I find that it has, there are moments of it where I'm like, okay, it's kind of cool. But, um, you know, I'm glad I didn't go to the theater to see this. Um, How dare you? How dare you trash Nicolas Cage's name? Uh, I, it's, oh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. All right. All right. Uh, Okay, interesting. I, uh, I I saw this movie too, too uh, clearly. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun, fun ride. Uh, either watching it, I, I feel like watching it at home would probably be a better experience just because, again, uh, setting it up at home and, and watching the, the film on VOD is, is a, it, it seemed like a streaming film for some reason. Maybe that's the thing, Rob. It felt like a streaming film. And by going to the movie theater, it felt odd. But I would say that uh, I had a very enjoyable time. I think Nicolas Cage is Nicolas Cage, and he went for it. And I think his performance was was really good. And at the end, there was a few twists and turns that I really enjoyed. And and let's be very frank, like like Javi, played by uh, the Mandalorian himself, he, like Pedro Pascal was wonderful in this movie. Like the two of their performances were so nicely executed, where. You know the the thing is uh, we'll we'll go go to the the plot lines, but Pedro Pascal just playing this naive guy that you know maybe is nefarious but really loves Nicolas Cage was was super super fun. So I very much enjoyed that dynamic. Like the, he's like he's Neil like Patrick, a lovable doof kind of. Yeah, it, it, Neil Patrick Harris is basically Neil Patrick Harris at the standpoint. So for him showing up to be like the agent, I'm just like, can you just be Neil Patrick Harris? Like what well, the whole <laughs> agent thing is I'm like, yeah, it's it's weird because you're pretty much it. But well, he's um, done his Neil Patrick Harris with the Harold and Kumar movies, right? Yeah. So yeah, like this is, you know, I guess this is a thing, right? This is what you like, do. Neil Patrick Harris right now, 
is such a caricature. Like either he's Barney from How I Met Your Mother, he's Dookie right. Hauser, he's the Neil Patrick Harris party animal, or he's the very like uh, flamboyant kind of character. And I feel uh, Rob and I basically both fans of Doctor Who. He's going to be in the special, and he's just going to be the flamboyant Neil Patrick Harris character in it. I'm just like, cool, I'm fine with that. But the ranges for Neil Patrick Harris is is hard. Even in The Matrix, I sat there, and I'm like, okay, sure. Uh, I would just rather you pretend to be Neil Patrick Harris. Uh, yeah, in- he's become he's become kind of too recognizable and, and known. That he, he can't be good parts. You're not going to be able to separate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah he, he, he's... He's there are certain character actors where you could be in these movies where you're like, oh, you're that guy, like the character actors, but who are made who are not major stars. And Neil Patrick Harris kind of teeters to the point where he's no longer that guy. So in all the all the movies, like in Heat, uh, or or you know, we all know uh, Silence of the Lambs. Neil Patrick Harris, Harris in Heat. That'd be sick. Yeah, there, that, <laughs> well, you know, uh, there there. He, Rob and I are you know. There's one character actor from Heat that just. You know, works uh, very well, but uh, again, he was never a mainstream star. And when you are a mainstream star, it, it kind of feels very weird. So it, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. So John, what do you give this out of uh, ten? Here we go. <laughs> do I give it a ten out of ten? No. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't. It, it takes a little minute to get rolling. That's why I think it might lend itself to a streaming platform a little bit better. Uh, unless you are a hardcore Nicolas Cage fan, and maybe you just, uh, then I think I would recommend seeing theaters. But otherwise, I give this one an eight out of ten. It was still a fantastic ride, um, more of a, a buddy comedy than I think uh, an action, a pure action vehicle. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Rob, um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a seven. You bastard. No, I know who my dad is. <laughs> you su- okay? <laughs> <laughs> Blasphemy, then. Blasphemy. Uh, it's this is a, this is I had this is I feel like it's a little higher. I feel like I, you're I'm higher than this because I felt there's some the, there's some realness in the Nicolas Cage in the beginning of the movie where it's like it was really like seemed way too serious and then it just deviated on silly and then went back Absurdity. to um yeah I, I think john you're right I, I think it's an eight uh i think the javier the, the javier pedro pascal nicholas cage buddy portion of it really elevates the movie um yeah so that that's that's uh well, what you're saying is pedro pascal elevates it to an eight yeah, but that's pretty pretty much what happened the uh, with uh, Boba Fett, the uh, book of Boba Fett. Pedro Pascal elevated it to a higher level. So uh, no, I know, but what I'm saying is, if there was somebody else that was in that role, it may not have been because Pedro. Yeah, Pascal I, we'll, we'll talk about it in spoilers. It. Yeah, we'll talk about spoilers, and, and and let's just you know, let's just go there. Uh, John, uh, play play the the effects or whatever we have uh, lined up for those of you who. Uh, not seen it. We are we're doing full spoilers at this standpoint. So, uh, I yeah, I, I'll continue my thought. I thought that Javier, that Pedro Pascal, like we all knew when watching the movie, like he wasn't the bad guy. They tried real hard to like maybe he could be. Really, I I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Really, I was kinda like yeah, I was like, oh, no, no, he's he's not the bad guy. From the very start, I'm like, oh, this guy's just a puppy dog. Like he's not the he bad guy. Like. <laughs> yeah, he's the father. Like they tried real hard to like make him like maybe ambiguous, yeah. but like I thought he was gonna have two sides. I thought he was gonna be the lovable doof when it comes to Nicolas Cage, and then all of a sudden he was gonna turn around and like blast people. Like I want to know at what point did you realize he wasn't the 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 big bad? No, I I, I waited right until the reveal, until they finally were like, wow, oh, there was yeah. so much before yeah. that. That is very <laughs> obvious. I don't think so. I I felt like he was gonna turn, and I was gonna right. I was gonna be very sad. If he made the turn, so I'm glad they didn't go that route. Yeah, I, I, yeah, like I, I knew from the beginning that this is the their chemistry was so well formed that every time I watched the two together, you could see the. I, I think what they say it's you act with your eyes, and Pedro Pascal's eyes were just puppy dog every time he saw Nicolas yeah. Cage. Maybe that's the thing where he was just like oh, Nicolas Cage, like. It's 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 really well done, and I no, thought it's, that... it's like a special category. It's like the bro, like if, if a bromance was ever a, a category for a movie, which I don't feel it quite is. Everything turns into an action 
mm. a buddy, like we're, we're a team that kind of does does damage and all that kind of stuff. This is like a, like legit, just a bromance, like of these two really really good friends meeting and coming together and and and, and completing a movie. I I feel like yes and no because the that that relationship requires both of them do equal footing to be good at something in another realm. And I felt like from a Star Wars analogy, like you know, Nicholas Cage was the Jedi Master, and 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 and, and Pedro Pascal Happy was the the Padawan. Like he just the entire like he really was just didn't know what he was doing the entire time, and until the end, where Nicholas Cage understood like he understands understands structure and story, but really outside of that, he wasn't really doing anything out that was the same level of Nicholas Cage outside of being able to actually drive. Well, on drugs. Other than that, like that's the only special skill he brought to the table until the very end, where he manned up. But even then, Nicolas Cage was flat out murdering people. I don't think Pedro Pascal was, you know, Javi was doing that, right? Like, did he shot people? But you know, it's, it's not the it's not the same. Uh, I want to fall back to you, John. Give us your list. Like, what were you surprised? What you liked? What what, what did you? What are your thoughts on the movie? Yeah, yeah. So unfortunately, I saw this in theaters, and we and we waited. I don't know how long till it, it dropped on uh, on video on demand or whatever. So I I, I don't have the whole movie 100 percent remembered. Um, so I didn't have a list ready per se. But I would say some of my favorite parts are, um, I really like uh, the the first thing where he's like, I'm I'm retiring from acting, mm. and then Pedro kind of like tricks, like kind of like gets 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 him rolling, and he's like, Oh no, those guys are chasing us, and he kind of like gets him into a role play, and then they jump off, and then they start forming the bond. Uh, and then the and then the scene that I think I absolute favorite is the one on the wall, and they kind of they they parodied the scene recently in a, in a new TV show as well, where he's kind of like you gotta let me go, you gotta let me go, and then he, and then then you're like oh it's dramatic, and then he just walks around the wall. He's like oh I just I just went this way, like I, I laughed out loud um, for that one for sure. And then hundred percent, the absolute best moment was the whole Caster Troy wax statue thing that pays off later when he goes and gets the guns from it. Like, I was like, I was like, oh, he's going to go back and get the guns. This is going to be amazing. Oh, and also opening the movie with the end of my one of my all-time favorite movies, Con Air. Um, already, like, as soon as I sat down, all the doubt that I had when yeah. you were kind of going to because because you don't know if it's going to be hit or yeah. miss. You got high ratings, and you're like, oh, I don't know if this is going to be, like, pure art, art house. But when we sat down and they showed that scene, I turned to, like, Pat, and I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. So, yeah, I'm uh, too too good, yeah. So many good parts. Uh, Rob, I, I feel some criticism coming, so I'm, I'm looking forward to your thoughts. <clears throat> um, okay, so listen, I, I think uh, I think you uh, you know you've summed it up perfectly in the what I think is the the best parts of this movie involve Peter Pascal and Nicolas Cage. Um, I I think here's what I think the movie does really well for me is that. The, the title we know it's about Nicolas Cage he's playing a parodied version of himself an exaggerated version of himself um you know obviously it's not his real wife it's not his real kid um but you know he, he talks about his his uh financial debts the fact that he's doing all these movies and the fact that it highlights and takes a lot of his um from his catalog of movies um quite liberally including some lines that are thrown in there um, to the most, you know, as John said, you know, showing clips of Con Air, showing, you know, uh, you know, when uh, Javi shows him his entire, uh, his, his room of all his collectibles, like, you know. <laughs> um, his shrine is amazing. His shrine. I'm so, so jealous. Know, I'm jealous um, of the shrine. You know, I mean, that was hilarious. Uh, that The two of them play so well off of each other, the comedic aspects of this really make it fun and funny. Um, the, the whole notion that, he has no other opportunities and he's just going to do this birthday party. It's a million dollars. He's, he doesn't really want to be there. Um, and, 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 you know, hilarity ensues. And I think that, you know, I guess to use the cliche, the buddy cop formula, but just the two, the two guys who come from different worlds and are, you know, and the drug aspect, like when they're doing the acid and, and they thought that the two guys were following them. Like yeah. to me, that is hilarious. That leads up to then the scene that John's talking about the wall. Um, it reminded me a lot of like an eighties comedy um, yeah, in yeah. that regard. And I was like, this is, this is great. What, what kills it for me though, to be very honest with you is 
you know, the whole plot is that, you know, while he's there, he's contacted by the CIA to say, hey, Javi is this massive, like, uh, uh, cartel dude who's kidnapped um, some president, uh, the kid of a president of a neighboring country to offset the election and this and that. And we need you to act as, like, our eyes on the ground. And all of a sudden it becomes like a true lies type thing. Uh, and and for me, it, it really bogged down. And, and made made the plot very convoluted in a way that I don't think it needed to be. And listen, I'm not the writers, uh, and you know my idea probably would be shit. But having them stumble onto something, or would have been you know, or stumble onto the fact that the that the nephew, uh, his cousin, is this cartel guy uh, by happenstance, I think would have been a lot more fun. Having the CIA with um, Tiffany Haddish and I can't remember the other guy's name. I quit hold. Excuse me. Um, involved in having them, you know, guide Nicholas Cage to do all these things as a CIA, you know, offshoot. To me, I was like, it just, it, it added such a level of complexity that I, it actually made the film drag. The runtime is an hour and 48 minutes. It's a tight uh, movie. It felt really long to me. Because yeah, um, they, they could have lifted if that I whole, had, if I had that whole gong thing right now. I would, I would gong you out of this. That's, <laughs> this is blasphemy. So no, I yeah. just I just I just felt like it was misplaced. Like I felt that that whole CIA, yeah. the only part of the CIA mission that was hilarious is when he put the stuff on his hand. Yep. Yeah. Right? And then he touched his forehead and all of a sudden he's like getting all drunk. <laughs> like that to me because it yeah. was the physical yeah. comedy that we yeah. don't see from Nicolas Cage ever. Yeah. And so that's where it's like it really works. The physical comedy that both of these guys did, fabulous. But this nefarious CIA plot and yeah. you know, I, I well, just thought it, it was it felt like those two characters were on for like maybe two days of shooting and it was during COVID, so they had them in their own special set or something like that. It it definitely wasn't I, I think they, I, they, I they, wanna, they incorporated I, it more. I want to respectfully disagree with you, Rob. Yeah. I think the Chuck Barris, you know, confessions of a dangerous mind slash gong show host slash the dating game slash he was working for the CIA because he could travel the world without anyone knowing anything right. was kind of the fun twist to it. I think that Ike Barinholtz and Tiffany Haddish, they were in it just enough where they're like, you sprinkle them in, they deal with something in that scene, and then they're killed immediately. I'm like, perfect. Like, just didn't drag on too long. We'll just in and out of the, the of the scene. And then at the end, it, it it that was the way for the writers to basically have Javier and Nick Cage have that conversation about like who are turning in each other and like story structure as well as like like him staying on the island a little bit longer. It, it to your point, it, it seemed a little off, but I think they just executed so well in terms of the pace of which it was in. It didn't drag on. It wasn't like a whole team of CI people. It wasn't like he was brought into like a cave and they're like, it was basically a classic Bond thing. Like if Lewis was there, uh, but then you maybe be on board. Uh, but I think it kind of worked really well. Those two people in and out, their safe house, and then both of them just being killed there as well. So, <laughs> See ya. <laughs> yeah, like, like, I, like, I Burrow doesn't even talk. Like, he's like, he basically in the chair face down. Like, they basically yeah. did him dirty. And then they're like, okay, Tiffany Haddish shoots the other guy, and that's it. So, uh, and, and, and then it transitions to the end where that whole scene where they're racing around, and then. The fun part where where he turns around and stabs the guy and it turns around all of a sudden you see Demi Moore and you're like what's happening and it's, <laughs> yeah. out, and it's like oh it's, they they made a, made a film adaptation of this experience which was hilarious right because I actually rewound that so I was like wait what like because the way he stabbed the guy <laughs> what's wrong with my eyes <laughs> and it pans back and yeah. it's a pulled in truck and yeah yeah Demi Moore and some other girl and and I'm like did they what I was like <laughs> wow like. Oh, congrats! Like that was cool, right? Yeah, like I, I, I think it had to had to, had these threads to. I think we talk a lot about the other God Obi Wan and the other shows that Disney. It's like the logic doesn't seem to be there, but this movie, although it's not perfect, the logic of the characters and the logic of the storyline is tight. The first act is him questioning himself, like Lily Lily Sheen. Who is the yeah. daughter of Michael Sheen and, and Kate Beckinsale? Like he looks, he looks like his. Uh, she uh, looks basically like Kate Beckinsale. I'm like, yeah. oh, I thought she was going to say like she's a the a, a, a death dealer or whatever for basically just from underworld. But like her, the whole thing about like we're trying to reconnect with the daughter and like singing the song and being a drunk and all that stuff. Like 
and the reason why I had to hit rock bottom to accept it. Because this is just another thing where, like, why would he accept this money? Well, he's in debt. You know, his daughter doesn't really like him. And he was like, okay, I, I need to, I'm going to retire. And this will be my last paycheck to pay off my, my outstanding debt because I'm, I'm living in a hotel. So, like, that logic is there. The next logic point is it sets up where they're in this island. He runs in the CIA and, and it sets up this, this beats of, like, oh, maybe there's something nefarious happening. Like, instead of dragging an extra 20 minutes to see him maybe stumble upon them having or something loading trucks with, with bullets and guns, it's, well, no, the CIA says so, puts cast doubt as to their friendship. So he doesn't know who to trust without Javier having to actually carry weapons or bodies or whatnot. There's no misunderstanding because he's been told by the CIA this guy's a bad guy. So all the things kind of work together in tandem to weave in the storyline, which I thought worked really well, including the end where it ended up being the movie. Like it was executed perfectly in terms of just the logic of this movie made sense, including Javi just being naive enough to bring his wife and daughter there. It's like, oh, you have problems. I want to help you. <laughs> but meanwhile, the first page is like, oh, he's trying to execute my wife and daughter. I was like, so there's all these little things that from a logic standpoint makes sense. Is it perfect? No. But for a Nicolas Cage movie where some of these Con Air and, and all this make little to no sense. Hey, this, whoa, wait, watch what you say about Con Air. <laughs> this, Keep this my Con like, Air out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, 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 face off. This is, this is like Of Mice and Men. This is, the, this is a perfect <laughs> logical movie compared to some of Nicolas Cage's other films where you're just like, what is happening? How's I'll, I'll, I'll say I would have liked the CIA plot to be, be to be cooked a little more. It, it felt like they maybe could have used a, a couple extra days of uh, shooting. And, 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 I, and I do like Tiffany. I don't know. Because I, like it, see more it, it, I think it worked well because any more people would have been questioning. like, why oh, are you yeah, doing no, no, no more people. I think they it, <laughs> it just felt like they kind of rushed them in. They only had a certain amount of time to film with them. And then they, they ushered them out a little fast. I, I mean, I really enjoy the fact that Javi is a fanboy, right? Like, people who watch this show or listen to it are fanboys or fangirls for their respective genres, whether it's movies, comics, statues, whatever. So mm -hmm. I like, I think we could all probably relate to Javi in some way. I mean, look at what's behind me. We know it, you know, uh, everybody has their collection of things that they like to, you know, to collect. So, uh, but, you know, again, the, these two work so well off each other you know Javi's embarrassed to show nick his collection of his movie yeah. memorabilia he's embarrassed he's shy it's like oh, i'm kind of i don't know if i want to show you this and then when you know and he I, again i thought of john when he's like you know there's the bunny like that like he does his line <laughs> and then when he sees his caster troy they you know the you know his uh one-to-one -one scale replica of his character more and he's like, it is hideous. <laughs> I'm, li I'm like how he, yeah, he like, he's like, it's hideous, but he's like, how much would you, how much would you sell it for? It's kind of like, kind of like, uh, it's horrible, but I want it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it was great. Yeah. Um, you know, I just thought that like, it was just like, there are, like I said, there are those moments that made this movie for me. I was like, you know, this is a lot of fun. And listen, despite the fact that I'm, I'm obviously the least appreciative of this movie out of the three of us today i it doesn't mean i wouldn't see it again i would see it again um but it might be one of those things where i might fast forward say about 15 20 minutes of it just yeah, to make if you jump to the point where he kind of gets to the island and he's and he's hanging out with with javi and stuff like that rob and Stu, we did our top five nicholas cage uh list a while back would would this crack into the top five somehow rob i i think it cracks into my top five for sure just because of the I don't remember what my top five were, to be honest with you. It was it was um Family Man, but you thought it was Weather Man. <laughs> I never put Family Man. Get the hell out of you here. You thought it was. You were like, it, it's got the bow and arrow and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, it wasn't right, in my rough. top five. <laughs> you mixed up the titles I, for some reason. To be fair, I, I think it had a lot to do with like uh, I think the movies we're talking about were like Raising Arizona, Moonstruck. A Con Air, Face Off, National Treasure, like those are kind of the yeah, big. The Rock big was in there. The Rock was in there. City of um, Angels. <laughs> yeah, City of Angels. You put it in there. Yeah, you put it in there. You had it on your list. <laughs> Just for the Goo Goo Dolls. Come on, everybody <laughs> likes Iris. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. So there, there are some, there are some films in there uh, that 
I, I think Rob also had love for Vampire's Kiss. Uh, there's, there's there's a bunch of movies in there that that you know, uh, it could happen to you was another yeah, another I had, one. I had that uh, in my my fifth. I think spot. John had that one there. I think we both. I think we both part of this pod because I don't remember. This. I think leaving <laughs> Las Vegas. I think leaving Las Vegas was there too, Rob. I think. Yeah. I think holy. You, you I, and really I think Rob made a joke yeah. about snake eyes, uh, but I, I think <laughs> an eight millimeter. There's a there's a, there's a bunch of bangers for Nicolas Cage, but I feel Wind like this Hopper. one because it, it ties so many movies in from his past into it. Uh, I think I for think sure, Rob cool. wrote uh, for sure is Captain Corral's mandolin. Like I think that was for sure in Rob's five. Because <laughs> um, you know what, like, I'll be honest with you, like I, there's a moment uh, towards the end, like so at uh, the beginning of the movie, he's you know his daughter is mad at him. Uh, he tried showing her. I can't remember what movie it was, and she was all pissed off about it. And <laughs> and he's like, and and you know, there's this whole idea that. You know, and Javi asks, oh, are you close to your daughter? And he goes, is anybody close to their 16-year-old daughter? No. Like, it's – and, you know, I have a 10-year-old daughter who thinks she's, like, 17 or 18, so I understand that. Uh, <laughs> John, you'll get there. Uh, um, and, you know uh, – Yeah, he's, and he's like, as close as I can be to, to recon- a 16-year-old or something like that. Right, and then when he's trying to reconcile, he's like, I try – and he's telling her, he goes, you know, mm-hmm. she goes, you – the pressure you put on me – to for mm-hmm. me to like the things that you like and he goes i didn't want you to like them i was showing you the things that influenced me that made me who i was and that like i know it's a, it may seem like a throwaway line or a throwaway that's realsies, man yeah that's realsies yeah but that yeah that is very real and that is something that i have always struggled with because i showed my son star wars uh, like what i call star wars which would be episode four i guess when he was three <laughs> Right. Like it's a rite of passage with, you You know, a dad with their, you know, uh, a son or a daughter. Like you show them the Star Wars. Like so. And now I think like I'm always like, hey, do you want to watch this? And I feel like I understand what Nicolas Cage is is going through. And I, yet I also understand what his daughter is saying, because I get that with my kids. So it's a very interesting moment uh, that I still haven't reconciled with, with how I feel about it, which I think is a good thing. So uh, anyways, I just want to bring that up. Yeah, it, it to your point. There's a lot of realness in in this movie that's surprising. Because again, yeah. even we talked about the beginning where he is reconciling a lot of his life choices and decisions about relationships with his child and with you know the the mother of his child too. It's like there was a time this how we met on set and like just sort of talking about the movie that they met on, right? So it is, yeah. It's it's like I wasn't expecting it from this movie. I and it was, it was even, very even when he time. talks about his career and stuff like that, and then they have that oh, that, that little Nikki character or whatever. Um, oh God! Know. Thank you for bringing it up because I wanted it, like Nikki. So weird. That was the thing where I just got there going, Nikki Cage, and I sat there going, "This is weird." I I wonder what John and Rob think of this <laughs> Nikki Cage character, including the part where Nikki Cage n- kisses him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? Although Nikki Cage was hilarious because he's like, we're the star, like, like crazy Nick Cage. Yeah, it's over yeah, the top yeah. Nicholas Cage. It was actually played by another actor, right? And then they just put Nicholas Cage's face on him or something like that. Like, oh, Ala, Ala, yeah, Ala face off. I think like, like they they didn't want him to have to like act with like himself or something like that. So they I thought that was hilarious. Him. I thought it was like his it, right? Like it was his, you know, that other persona that you know the the wild and crazy Nicholas Cage. Yeah. Um, I thought that was really hilarious. Although, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, guys. At first, I was like, Is "That Adam Sandler doing Little Nicky? What's <laughs> the yeah. same work with the same hair?" And I was like, "What's happening?" Oh, okay, in the cage. All right, but it is a very weird inclusion of a character, right? But it's yeah. his, it's his id, alter ego, however you want to, his subconscious. You know, it is, it is the actor version of Nicolas Cage. A cooler version of yes. Cooler. Yes. It, it it was it was good. So uh follow questions, John, uh to you. Uh if you had unlimited funds and you could make a Nicolas style Nicholas Cage style room with prop and memorabilia from any actor, what actor would that be? Oh, Money with no object and you could make similar shrine to an actor with and any you could get all the merch and all that stuff and all the stuff. Money was no object. Who that who would you pick? I think it. I think it has to be, it has to be Tom Cruise because he actually doesn't release a lot of merchandise associated with his movies. So you got to kind of get all. You'd have to like kind of seek out like his bomber jacket, his like sunglasses, or like it. It all have to be movie worn like 
memorabilia mm. or something like that. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And, and I guess the argument could be made that Tom Cruise is the last movie star, right? That, that's what the, all the headlines were when Top Gun came out. But but we do have Nicolas Cage, who is so. John, all, <laughs> the first is yes. All you walk through the the shrine in your basement has all this Tom Cruise stuff. What is the Tom Cruise statue? What what film is the at the very end of this? There is Tom Cruise mannequin holding something from a movie. What is this Tom Cruise mannequin slash statue? I, I think, I think you, you, you think I would go with something actiony, but I think you go with show me the money Tom Cruise pose. And you just have him sitting at a desk with a headset on in a suit, and you just be like, "Show me the money." It'd be funny so, to see that. So it's the headset there. from from Jerry Maguire. Yeah, yeah it's like the headset. He's the wearing the suit. Jerry Maguire. <laughs> yeah, that that would be a funny. You'd be like, "You have a white statue of Jerry Maguire." <laughs> that would be the equivalent, I think. Rob, same question. Yeah, I wouldn't pick an actor. I would. I. I. I'm, maybe I'm cheating. I would pick a director. You have to pick an actor. No. No director. <laughs> director. Who's your director? director? Tarantino. No, no, no. I would have picked John Hughes. I would have picked a lot of stuff from the John Hughes movies Ooh. because I think that those influence me a lot more. But if I have to pick an actor, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have one actor that I'm like. I don't. I don't. Army. I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can tell you Rob it's on sale. It's cheap, uh, three cents on the dollar. Yeah, you get, you get all that stuff now. The you know what? I don't. I don't have an actor to be, or an actress, or whatever. I don't have somebody that uh, that I would uh, that I would uh, that I've idolized in their film uh, body of work. I mean, I don't go to movies to follow a specific actor. I don't know why. I just don't. I, it's never. This is like a Lies. very difficult question for me. I can say, oh, Tom oh. Hanks, because, you know, he's such in such memory. But I, what would I really want? Like, what, Wilson? Uh, like, yeah, there's nothing. Like, you know, How about like, Mel Gibson? No Mel Gibson? Again, I don't think that's probably. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you follow all these inappropriate stars? <laughs> um, you know what? Okay, if I had to pick, maybe, maybe Robert Downey Jr., only because his, his, his real life arc of fame and a, and and burning like this is a guy who was so high on drugs he broke into other people's bedrooms like other people's houses like naked uh went to jail and then his redemption Jesus Christ I didn't know that <laughs> yeah, yeah and then his redemption like he was a he was so talented in 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 um Chaplin uh, Chaplin thank you I was gonna say Chappy Chaplin and then to know he <laughs> and then he was he a robot and then it's gone <laughs> <laughs> right? We thought that was it. We thought that Robert Downey Jr. was gone, and that was a write-off. And well, we, we thought he was truly gone after his stint on Alan McBeal. So right. I thought, yeah, yeah. But to, and then to now, come, so I I guess if I would say because I guess I, I like redemption, I like the rising of whatever. So I, I guess if I had what, it so, somebody, but so is the, the statue at the end Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. Or what's the no, what's it's the, Tropic the, Thunder, right? No, I would yeah. <laughs> You're trying to get me in trouble, John. I don't like it. <laughs> What's the um, statue? Um, you know, I would probably pick um um I just had it on top of my head and I can't oh I, I'd probably pick Chaplin to be honest with you. Oh I'd probably pick him as as, as Chaplin because I, I think that it yeah. In black and white or color? Black and white. Black and white. Well, the suit is black and white. So don't worry about it. It's a yeah. uh, and him holding the with the forks and then the yeah. two dinner rolls. Like yeah. that's you know that's you know using that scene. So I, I guess if I would have to go with anybody, but yeah, not from uh, not from Benny and June starring uh, Johnny Depp. Ooh, so. <laughs> no, yeah, Johnny Depp stole that. We from the Charlie Chaplin state refuse and don't allow you to do that. Um, yeah, I, I Stu is it Jackie Chan. <laughs> John, John, no, it's 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 for me. It's my favorite action hero of of the eighties and nineties. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like I want all of Schwarzenegger's stupid stuff. Uh, I want the 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 ridiculous gun he had in Eraser. I want uh, you know the jacket the, from Terminator. <laughs> like him and Jimmy Conn are fighting each other. I want I want that. Um, I want for sure. You know I want the I want the suit from the Running Man. I, I want. You I thought know, you were gonna say twins. I thought you wanted the suit from twins. No, 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 no. I, I, I uh, uh, twin. I, I want, I want his jacket from Kidder and Cop. 
So I want yeah. I want some things that he wore his loafers from Kindergarten Cop. Uh, things things that I want from there. Uh, for sure, the statue would be Conan the Barbarian holding the, the sword. Uh, oh, that would be the fun. throne. The throne at the end, like the yeah, man, that would be a good one too. Yeah, yeah but you know what? You gotta think of like space. And now Stu has that palatial state, so the actual yeah. footprint yeah. of where the throne and the the base. But an actual Conan, yeah, old a throne of old Conan holding that sword, Conan. disheveled with the beard and hat. Yeah, that that's that's right. It's it's old Conan from the end of of that uh, Conan Barbarian. And, but you'd be uh, stuck with the knockoff Conan the Destroyer. Destroyer is great. No, it's not. That's not Conan the Destroyer. Um, yeah, Chamberlain. You have the whole Chamberlain accompanying statue. <laughs> the house, the house of mirrors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, should have, you should have the the junior uh, wax statue. That would be. Like, that, you know, I, I I wouldn't mind the stomach of uh, the prosthetic piece from Junior. Yeah, yeah, whatever you uh, wore. <laughs> <laughs> There's the, the, I think the Sultan hat he wore in Jackie Chan, uh, hundred uh, around the world in hundred days. That that terrible movie he was yeah. in. Uh, yeah, there's there's a I, I think a lot of, of baby oil from Hercules in New York. Clearly, that's like that <laughs> like the rock. So yeah, I, I want I want Schwarzenegger stuff. I think that would be hilarious uh, to have it. And then yeah, the guns from True Lies or whatever. I don't know. I can figure it out. The, <laughs> the front half, uh, the Harrier jet from True Lies. That's what you need yeah, in, you... in the TV room. <laughs> and then the, the ticket from, uh, the, the golden ticket from uh, Alaska. Oh, the last so, action hero. <laughs> so, the stuff that it just never ends, baby. Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger is definitely what, I was, I was thinking of that, but I, I had to go with Cruz. I, I'm kind of regretting not picking Keanu Reeves, though. Uh, Reeves would have been yeah. Reeves would be really cool. It yeah, yes and no because it's a lot of just weapons of John Wick. So it's like John Wick and like yeah. Matrix Bill and Ted yeah. time. You got his walk in the clouds era. You could get that suitcase full of all the chocolate. Nobody wants to <laughs> walk in the clouds. What are I you got to hate on about? walk in the clouds. <laughs> when are we doing our Keanu Reeves top five a thon? Oh, do you next. want that from the lake house too? Like what <laughs> are you <laughs> the mailbox from the lake the house? The lake house. Wow. Yeah. 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 There, there's the ball from that there's baseball movie. Like, what are you there's about? the bus from Speed. You can get the bus from. Oh yeah, Speed. you want to get a whole bus in my house. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, I think John, really, John wants the car from, uh, from uh, that that movie he did where he uh, that they did the movie about uh, or the TV show, uh, Brothers and Sisters or Adult what, uh, Parenthood. Oh, Parenthood. He, he he was the race car driver, so John yeah. wants the car from from Parenthood. Uh, yeah, so. That's a. It's not worst. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not bad. I, you can fill your whole house with all the stuff from John Wick. You could have sexy yeah, suits but then, but then also, and all the not, all the weapons, all the cars. You're not, but you're not then a Keanu Reeves fan. You're just a John Wick fan. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to live the life of John Wick. You're a John Wick larper. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But, not but a bad life, folks. Thing, not a bad here's life. The thing, John, you could have also pivot, pivoted and went for Jean Claude Van Damme and a <laughs> lot of obscure Jean Claude Van Damme. You, you stuff. can own a lot of his stuff. I saw some guy yeah, like about his old Bentley or something like that. The mat could be of the mat from Bloodsport. Like you could have done a lot of things and like, oh, this mat was used in Bloodsport and and this 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 uh, this sash was used in the, <laughs> the, the, the Kumite oh. mat. <laughs> yep. 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 Anyways, we can go on all day. Uh, we're gonna wrap this up because uh, the we're sand going on that a... was thrown into his eye. Yeah, <laughs> that, <laughs> that powder. I have it in a jar. <laughs> I, to be fair, John would wear it and lock it around his neck. Like that, he wouldn't even put that around. But, yeah, a little locket. He'd be like, "What's stand, that, John?" Stand this blinded Frank Dukes in the fire. <laughs> Stored in Tom, what Tom Lay's uh, underwear. <laughs> yeah. And, and it would also on the inside break in case of emergency. So if John was in every situation, he'd use the yeah. same stand and throw it in the face. <laughs> so, That's yeah. like, not again, John. How much of this do you have? Dual <laughs> meaning. It's not only a prop, but also for personal safety. So, uh, you know, let's let's get that rolling. I was going to uh, message my cousin who's an eye doctor and go, hey, what do you think that stuff was that he threw in John claude Van Damme's eyes? But I was scared she was going to laugh me off the, uh, <laughs> the phone. No. <laughs> We'll, we'll ask anyone out there. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Ask any wrestling fan. Mr. Fuji used the same shit. <laughs> no, they they did, this yeah. is genuinely blinded Van Damme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, for a long time. Maybe he glass or something as well. All right, uh, John, tell us where to where people find you on the internet and in the real world. 
Yeah, so our most active social media is the Instagram and the Facebook, Heroes World Online. Follow us there. All the latest releases, all the new things that drop in the shop. The shop is located in the physical real world on uh, 8601 Warden Avenue in Markham, Ontario. So stop by. we got tons and tons of stuff to show you. And we'd love to chat with you in person. Uh, and then if you're following the Audio Heroes World podcast on Spotify, iTunes, uh, also the Sidekick Show is also available there as well. So check us out. Uh, if you're on Spotify, please give us a, a rating. I think we need 10 ratings to actually start showing up on some of the algorithms. So help us out, folks. And always appreciate it. Everyone sharing, liking, and checking out and supporting our content. It's very much appreciated. Rob, what's going on the Sidekick Show? Oh, boy. So every Monday night live, uh, 8.15 p.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Uh, that's 8.15 Eastern uh, for those who might be left, uh, listening throughout the country. Um, John and I are going back to revisit Avengers Endgame. This past week we did infinity war john has only seen both of these movies once i don't understand uh, john <laughs> wasn't an overly big fan of infinity war i can tell you though once you know what happens it's done <laughs> i don't know what john i don't know what john's overall opinion is but he did message me and said 10 minutes into end game it's already better so um so we're gonna revisit that you can check out end game if you don't own it uh, you can check it on disney plus and then join John and I live uh, Monday night, 8.15 p.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. The YouTube link is obviously uh, on this video page. So you can uh, set your reminder there and you get your uh, you know, countdown with us as we, we go live. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, please let us know in the comments. If you like what you're doing, we're doing, uh, do us a favor. Like, uh, subscribe, uh, do the bells, do all the stuff. Comment below on what your thoughts on this movie are. Or also what fan cave you would have and what actor. So let us know below uh, if you had an actor or if John and I are correct with Schwarzenegger <laughs> uh, and uh, Tom Cruise, Rob, of course, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, so let us know uh, through your thing. Do you know the other actor would be really cool too that I think about it now that I'm saying- Ron Jeremy? No, Rob. <laughs> no thanks. No thanks. You mean the guy that's going to jail, Rob? You really know how to just pick felons. Then <laughs> <laughs> this person going to jail? Yeah. Hey, do you guys want to look at my Phil Spector collection? No. All right. Yeah. Uh, the actor now that I'm thinking, I'm like, it would be really cool. Samuel Jackson. Oh, I man. think Samuel Jackson stuff would be really because he's been in everything. You could have a, a dinosaur from Jurassic Park. His like severed arm. You could have uh, you could have a lightsaber of Mason. Eye patch, eye patch, Nick. You could have so much stuff from all the stuff from the Django, Django Unchained, like Tarantino films. Snakes, snakes, snakes. snakes. <laughs> You've been in a lot of films, so maybe if I maybe maybe Low Down, Dirty Shame, New Jack City, uh, Coming to America. Like, yeah, there's a whole. Oh man, maybe 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 yeah, maybe the question, maybe maybe it's uh, Samuel Jackson. I don't know. Uh, thank you. Well, really it shows Emilio Estevez. <laughs> you can have the Mighty Ducks thing on you. Your... Yeah, you, again, picking someone under controversy who who, who <laughs> left uh, uh, the Disney uh, filming set because he had views on uh, his body. Wait, his body. Oh, he just kicked uh, okay. off his own show, Stop right? <laughs> Is he what? off his own show? Yes. Oh, yeah. Wow. He refused to uh, have get Mighty off. Ducks and then kick off the main Mighty Duck. I don't know what you call it, but you're, you're, he can't come into the country because he's not vaccinated. Because he's shooting Vancouver. They must and have lifted all that though. No. 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 To come as a Canadian, it's your given right to come back to the country. But if you're not Canadian, they're not letting you in without the vaccination. So yeah, you can leave at the country Canada if the other country you're going to also doesn't have rules in terms of vaccination. But yeah, Canada is strict. That's why there are a lot of baseball players who are suspiciously not coming to the country. Uh, sports athletes who didn't come up. They're like, yeah, they're just uh, sick and they can't come to Toronto. Family obligations. Yep, yep. So, yeah. So, on a downer note, thanks, 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 Rob, for picking on every single person that has a thing. <laughs> Rob, next is uh, on his list is Amber Heard. So, uh, get rid of that. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, two movies. <laughs> My collection is <laughs> really small. <laughs> she could have wanted two movies. She was in Tribe Angry with Nicolas Cage. Tribe Angry with Nicolas Cage. Uh, Aquaman. Aquaman. She was, she was in things. She might be in Aquaman 2. Might not she, be. <laughs> she, 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 she's in Aquaman. She's in the extended yeah, Snyder yeah, Cut. No, she's she's in things. Uh, yeah, uh, 
Johnny Depp stuff, maybe Rob. Maybe that's what Rob will pivot to. Johnny Depp stuff, Pirates of the Caribbean, right. and uh, Edward Twenty One Jump Street. Yep. <laughs> Twenty One Jump Street. That's right. There you go. There we go. All right. Well, we're gonna go on all day. Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with us. Yeah. See you later. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.